And now, we're going to look at the second reading, which is from the book of Revelation. And it's the vision of Jesus in glory. In the very opening lines, almost, it's Revelation 1, 5 to 8. Um, I'm going to go back up to 4, so you get the whole paragraph. From John, to the seven churches of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. Who could that possibly be? That's eternal. He is. He was. He will always be. You see? And from the seven spirits in his presence before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. Now you can see how this text is as well speaking of the majesty as we, the one like a son of man we just saw in uh, uh, the book of Daniel. You see? And so, Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. Then why does he let these people rule and oppress the poor? Why, if he's a ruler, why doesn't he stop this? The, look at the cruelty, the oppression of the poor that goes on. Why doesn't he stop it? He will if you give him your life. In you, he will stop it. That's what the church is for. To preach good news. To take away from people the fear that death ends existence. Therefore, I must have the most meaningful, comfortable, pleasure-filled life. Because this is all there is. No, this is not all there is. This is not all there is. And therefore, you see, he is the one. Uh, and he is the king. This is his feast. Christ the king. He is the king. You see? He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. And now, the word of God begins to open up the secret. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. That is an act of faith. That is coming from the depth of this highly graced human being, a mystic, who not only sees Jesus, but sees who he is. You see? And he is the one. You see? He's the firstborn of the dead. He's the oldest of, uh, you know, he's the firstborn from the dead. And by his blood, he has made us into a kingdom. He's our king. And so, we have this world now where Christ is king. Why does he not rule like every other king? Eliminate all his opposition. Impose his will and force justice. Because it wouldn't be justice. Justice has to come from the heart. And that is why you remember, I've gone over this text several times before, but it's such a masterful text. It's in the Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. It's where uh, Ivan tells his brother, I'm going to write a poem. And the poem is going to be about the Grand Inquisitor, who will be a tall, ascetic Franciscan, according to the, uh, Ivan. Well, Jesus comes back. This is 16th century Seville. And this grand, tall figure is the head of the Inquisition. He's the one rooting out heresy. So, he comes. And he, and he heals some people and comforts some people. And then, from out of the church, is carried a beer with a little girl on it who had died. And the people say, Jesus... Help her. 
he goes over and raises her to life. And the Grand Inquisitor, watching from the other side of the street, says, Arrest that man. So he runs over and gets him. And Jesus goes along with him into jail. And the Grand Inquisitor comes that night. Now this is Dostoevsky, the mystic. This is before communism and all its daughters and sons really arose. That is, that man will be the ruler of this world which is communism. And so, and uh, so Ivan starts to tell uh, his brother. So, Jesus is put in jail and at midnight the Grand Inquisitor comes down. I think I've told you all this before but it's worth reflecting on. The Grand Inquisitor said, why did you come back? It's taken us nearly 1600 years to undo what you tried to accomplish. You see? You made one fatal mistake. You thought human beings wanted to be free. They don't want to be free. They want to be safe. We know. But we are the martyrs. We are the ones strong enough to impose rule. Though we know that they have to surrender their freedom to us. And they'll do it for safety, for bread, and for wonder. Then the Grand Inquisitor says, you had your chance. You could have turned those stones into bread and the whole world would have followed you for bread. But you thought they wanted to be free. So you didn't do it. You don't understand. They want to be safe. They want us to tell them what to do. They'll hate us for it but they'll be glad that they don't have the burden of freedom. Then, if you had jumped from the parapet of of the temple and the people had seen that, you are a wonder. They'll follow you. They'll do whatever you say. And again, the world will be your slave. But you made that mistake. They wanted to be free. Again, finally, you could have taken over the whole world. All the kingdoms. You could have had them all. You wanted social justice, you could have imposed it anywhere you wanted, provided that everyone surrendered their freedom to you. And they would gladly do that to have a good GNP. Even look at the election promises. They would gladly do it. But you thought they wanted to be free. That was your mistake. You thought it should be love and not comfort and fear. That was your mistake. It took us 1,600 years to undo it. And so I ask you, why are you back? Well, the answer is he never left. And you want to see him living? Look at the saints. Did Mother Teresa impose her will? Did Padre Pio? Did uh, St. Francis? No. They led, they healed, they comforted, they brought a knowledge of God that brought deep freedom into the depth of the human spirit. That's what they did. What we do, we great rulers of the earth, and though it may start off the temptation is inexorable. I will gather more and more money, more and more homes, more and more power, more and more. And the people who are willing to do what I tell them for the sake of bread and security, they're not even getting bread and security. They're in lines on the street waiting to be fed. And I now have millions of dollars. And, you know, this is exactly what happened in Russia. And so, this is the Grand Inquisitor, you see. Uh, so finally then, after the Inquisitor had finished his speech, Jesus gets up, kisses him, and walks out the door. And we're left with the same conundrum. Are we going to honor Christ the King? Well, then, it's a kingdom. 
of peace, of justice, of forgiveness. It's not a kingdom looking for the best distribution of this world's goods. And the best, of course, is that I control them all and I distribute them. That's the best. And in doing that, what do I do? I keep untold wealth for myself. And that's why only a saint can rule the world. Or better yet, only Jesus rules the world. And if we will give our lives to him, we will see what the preface of the Mass uh, speaks about. Kingdom of justice and righteousness of truth. You see, it's possible. It's possible. But only by yielding to Christ the King. And we don't want to take that chance. So we don't. And that's why, you see, uh, but, as the text continues, Behold, he is coming amid the clouds. This is the Son of Man from Daniel, right? And every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him will see him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. We killed him. And it wasn't just the guys the day at Calvary. My sins have killed him. He died for my sins. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That is the first and the last. Okay? The one who is and who was and who is to come. That is, will always be the Almighty. Who is that? Jesus. The Word of God incarnate who has come to exercise his kingdom. Now, do you understand? That's why there's a church. If we could only be kingdom, get over our divisions, our sensuality, our sloth, our pride, and live the kingdom, people would beat the doors down to join us. We would be preaching by who we are. It works. But we don't do that. And that's why while we celebrate this feast of Christ the King, we have to also repent that he's not our king. Money, power, sensuality, revenge, comfort, something else is our king. And that's why why we celebrate this feast and glorify Jesus, we have to acknowledge that it is a call to conversion, making him actually the king of my life, handing my whole life over to him. There are beautiful ways to do this. The Monfort teaches us to give your life to Mary, and then with Mary, you give your life to the king. You see? You surrender to the Holy Spirit who guides you because he is the spirit of Jesus. And you give up self-centeredness. Give up. You know, wanting to be first. Wanting, give up. All that make, all these false kingdoms, all of which inevitably collapse because they're founded on pride, avarice, and dominating power. And that's why the Grand Inquisitor could never, never succeed. The kingdom is the kingdom of Christ.